Hello, my friend and friends. One thing I actually struggle in teaching a lot is flex basis and not so much because it's hard to understand. It's more about here's why you want to learn it, because for me, that's always important. And flex basis is one of those things that you can sort of understand the, the whole switchy thing. We're going to see that in a second, what I mean. Uh, but then you're like, OK, but when would I ever use that rather than setting a width or height? Because a lot of the time you actually want a width or a height instead of it's something that could actually switch depending on the flex direction of the parent. It's all kind of weird. Uh, but I actually found a use case recently and I want to take a look at what it is with you. And this use case actually came up during like an hour and a half long video. You might have already seen it with the accordions. Um, but I figured most people don't want to watch an hour and a half long video where we're building out a big thing just to get one little snippet on flex basis. So I'm condensing it down uh, in this one right here. And I've set this really basic example up here where we have a flex container. It switches flex directions right now and some items inside of it. And we're going to see the real world situation um, in a second, but just really fast. Bear with me right now. Um, what we're going to do, and you, very simple, we have inline style or in, whatever, embedded styles, this thing where it's at the top of the page, uh, to do this one. Um, but here, like with these items, a lot of the time you're just going to stick a width on there. And I want the width to be say 500 or 500, 150 pixels, just so they actually get bigger. Uh, and you're happy with that. That's what you need. And it doesn't matter which way around they are. You sort of always want them to be 150 pixels. It's kind of mucked up right now because of my heights on the parent here. But like, what if I don't want the width to be 150 here? I want the height to be 150 here and I want the width to be 150 here. And that's where flex basis comes in instead. Flex basis will change with the flex direction. So here we're getting 150 width. And then when I go this way, we're actually getting 150 height. It's not common. You actually need that to happen just because of how squishy and movable and everything on the web is that you want the same height as a width, depending on the way they're flipped. It sounds kind of practical, but when you get into real world applications and stuff, at least for me, I haven't run into tons of use cases for them, which is why I got so excited when I find when I found this example. And so what that one was, if we jump over to my, my main here is when I was building out, um, it doesn't look fantastic right now, but I was building out a the carousel component like I talked about. And that's where I ran into exactly that situation where at smaller sizes, they were stacked this way. And at larger screen sizes, they got they went that way. And what was really important for this actually all to work was to make sure that when they were in their shrunk form, they were following the border radius, of the icon that was there and the icon always stays the same size. So if I go over to the CSS that I was using, if I did, let's say at the small ones here, I found my accordion. Uh, so I have the accordion and then in there is the accordion panel. And I could have said height 75 and you can see here it's actually working and I have it no animation right now, but whatever, it's working and it's doing what I want it to do. But then when I'd get to the larger screen size, it would sort of break. And then I need to go into my media query that I have set up here, or I'd have to you know, move it down, whatever. And I'd have to set up another one. So when we're going this way, things are actually changing left to right instead of changing up and down. And again, this isn't something that you see all the time, but in this situation, it worked really well because instead of having to onset the height, in the media query and then set a width, I could just use my flex basis here. And by setting the flex basis there, now this way, they're following on the width and I've also animated it so it looks a little nicer. Uh, but the important thing is the closed ones right now are perfectly matching there. And then when I shrink down, the closed ones are matching in their height. And I can do that just by using flex basis and I know that it's gonna match regardless of the orientation, which was exactly what I needed in this case. And so, yeah, I was super happy that I found it and I wanted to share that with more people than would watch, be watching that really long tutorial. With that said, though, if you do want to go and check out that longer tutorial, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome Enrico, Michael, Simon, Tim and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the Internet just a little bit more awesome.